Not that long ago, I was talking to a group of friends, explaining how I slept inside my Jeep. Several of them said, I don't know how you could sleep in there, or what on earth would make you want to do that? Are you crazy? Who sleeps inside their car, they laughed. Then, one of my closest buddies chimed in saying, You know, when I was growing up, there were times when me and my mom had to live out of our car. Not by choice, but because of necessity. We were homeless. Those in the room immediately became silent as their sympathy, concern, and astonishment seemed to pause time as he recounted this piece of his upbringing. Yeah, all we had for some time was a club wagon van on the streets of Santa Cruz. You could hear a pin drop as we listened. But, he continued, when you're a kid, you don't realize that you're homeless. You just remember the times when you'd wake up and your front yard was a park or a beach. Those were good times, he said. Some of the happiest memories I have. Then he turned to me and said, So I get it. Even though you have the comfort of home and you could easily afford to stay in a nice hotel, you sleep in your Jeep where you can wake up to a granite cliff as your front porch. A symphony of birds is your alarm clock, the smell of pine trees carried by the breeze. Then he said something I'll never forget. Don't confuse comfort for happiness. So welcome back to the channel. Uh, really appreciate you being here. You know, let me go ahead and give that subscribe push early in the video here. If you're not subscribed to the channel, uh, I would really appreciate it. All the YouTube analytics say and show that about half of you are not subscribed who are watching uh, some of my most recent videos. So go ahead, click that subscribe button. It's easy for you, free for you, helps me out a ton with regard to uh, the channel. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of 24. And I'm filming this on New Year's Day, 2024. So I got 365 days to get there. So what's this video about? This video is gonna be about my bedroom or my sleep setup. I'm gonna take you through each component of how I sleep inside the Jeep and the various pieces of equipment, gear, and so on that help me do that. Uh, I've been meaning to make this video for quite some time because I am one of the few overlanders, quote unquote, uh, with a channel who does not have a rooftop tent. And that being said, I get looked at a little as the oddball sometimes, uh, but I wanna show you why uh, if you're just maybe getting started out, again, I'm trail newbie, uh, so I just started this overlanding journey here in the last couple of years, that if you're just starting out, you can sleep inside your vehicle. Just about whatever vehicle you have, you can find a way to have a good sleep set up in there without having to go through the whole process of a roof rack, rooftop tent, and all of that. There's also a lot of convenience that I'm gonna to touch on, and that is all of your gear is inside your sleeping area, so you can access things wherever they are. Versus a rooftop tent, where you might go, oh, I forgot something down in the vehicle, I gotta go down the ladder, I gotta get it, and it might be raining, it might be snowing, it might be, you just might not wanna get out of bed. Uh, but when you sleep inside your vehicle, everything's right there inside. So I'm going to take you through it now, and I just want to thank you for joining me. Uh, let's get to it. All right, so my bed setup all starts right here at the rear passenger door. You can see my pillow right there. Um, the bed is set up at all times. 
and I'm going to take you through kind of how it's set up and the various pieces of gear that allow me to set it up that way, uh, just so you can consider this potentially for yourself. But one of the key things here about sleeping inside the Jeep is, say you get to camp late, there's nothing to set up. Effectively, I could just hop over the driver's seat into the back, lay down, go to sleep. You might have some major rain, something like that hitting you, and you don't want to have to get out and set up anything, set up a tent, set up nothing. With this setup, sleeping inside your vehicle, you can just show up, get in bed, go to sleep. A lot of times we get to campsites uh, late, late at night, and the last thing you want to do is a lot of setup, best way I can describe it. So uh, I'm going to take you through this, give you a, a uh, up close uh, look at my sleep setup, which I've never really done before, and all the things that uh, make it for me the very best option for my overlanding setup here. So let me take you uh, through the inside. All right, so one of the first things about having a good sleep setup is window shades. And these window shades that I use are from WeatherTech. One-handed here, and they just pop right in, just like that. So that way you can have a blackout and obviously some privacy uh, here in your sleep setup or bedroom. Now let's move on to the sleeping bag. Nothing overly exciting here. I think this is just a Coleman, I don't know, 20 degrees, zero degrees, something like that. I'd have to look into it. Um, key to a good setup, in my opinion, is having a full size pillow. So I've got a king size pillow here that uh, is quite comfortable. Now for the sleep setup in the Jeep, I do need to put the front passenger seat all the way forward. And that is because I'm six foot four and I need every inch of room that I can get in here. My head goes basically right up to the edge of the seat. My feet go all the way down to the uh, tailgate down there. So um, the amount of room in here, I would say is right at six foot four, maybe six foot five, uh, because I've just got uh, an inch or so of room on each end, if that. Now, the key is a good mattress. Everybody's looking for a good mattress. And in my case, I use the Deep Sleep, let's pull this back, Solo Mat. The Deep Sleep Solo Mat is cut perfectly to fit right here inside the Jeep. And I've found that you don't necessarily need to you know, fill it up all the way to make it really firm or anything like that. It has foam inside of it and it is extremely comfortable. All right, let's put this back together here. Now, the next thing about having a good sleep setup is being able to have all of your gear up and away from your body. You obviously don't wanna have you know, gear laying on top of you, you wanna have a completely clear area to sleep. So I'm gonna show you some of the keys to that, starting with my Vector Highland shelf. This shelf is probably the most key to this sleep setup, and the Vector shelf um, holds a ton of gear, can hold a ton of weight, and obviously it gets the um, uh, gear up off where my legs would be. I'm able to also use this to do some water storage. I have a few roto packs that are mounted underneath. But that's not all in terms of gear storage. You've seen many, many times on my channel my front runner boxes that uh, I actually have a stack of uh, not just these two, but if you look down there, there's a total of four front runner boxes in here. And uh, I pull those out, I have legs for them so I can get all of my gear um, out very easily around camp, but I can also store it all the way inside the vehicle, um, quite simple. All right, a major key to my setup here is these Size Stasher bags by Amazing Life. These are made by a great guy named David. You definitely gotta go check out his channel and his website to check these out for yourself. He makes these for the Jeep JL and also for the Jeep JK, and these are awesome. They hold an absolute ton of gear. 
As you can see, the zippers come down. I have tools in this one. I have my Kraken inflation tubes. I have, I, if I remember right, obviously some toilet paper, paper towels. I have uh, mosquito repellent and so on. I have all of my charging cables uh, in a little uh, pouch that I keep in there. And then the, each side where the side stasher is also has this little detachable bag right here, if you can see that. And in here, I like to keep a little uh, anchor battery pack to charge my phone at night and so on. I have stuffed these things full with all kinds of gear uh, and items that I need uh, here inside the Jeep uh, while I'm sleeping or just for my overall camp setup. Now, when you buy a side stasher bag, you don't just get one. Let me take you all the way around the Jeep here to the other side. Move my heated blanket, move my Devos Light Ranger. And on this side, I have a whole nother side stasher made in the USA. And on this one, I put a little Velcro on there. I uh, just labeled this my recovery gear. And if you open this up, there is all kinds of recovery gear. I've got a kinetic rope, I've got a tree strap, I've got some ratchets. Um, I know there's more than that in there. And then uh, just like the other one down below, here's this um, second bag that I've uh, filled up, I think with soft shackles uh, and so on. So you get two of these and the amount of gear that you can store inside these side stasher bags is just crazy. All right, now back around to the bedside. One thing that I think is very important to have access to is your power system while you're sleeping. Uh, if you need to charge anything, if you need to keep an eye on what's going on in regards to um, your battery, it is uh, excellent to have within an arm's reach uh, while you're sleeping here. So in this case, I have an Anchor Solix F1200. Uh, used to be called the uh, Anchor 757. And I've just got that kind of trickle charging off of my Jeep while I drive. So the battery on that is always pretty much ready to go. It is the main power source for my fridge. And my fridge is an Iceco JP50. Um, it's right around 50 uh, liters. The um, website says I think it's 52.8 quarts. Now, to get a fridge of this size while still being able to sleep inside your Jeep, I did a whole video on this fridge as it compares to my prior fridge, which was the Dometic. And this is, in my opinion, and from what I've found, the smallest fridge in terms of its footprint from side to side and from front to back that has the largest volume. You're getting almost 50 liters here and the footprint of it still allows me easily to sleep inside my Jeep. This fridge is key to my setup here. If I didn't have that small of a fridge, I wouldn't be able to sleep inside the Jeep. It's pretty much that simple. So having this uh, Iceco JP50 uh, or a smaller format fridge, if you have one, uh, is critical to being able to sleep inside your vehicle. Now, one thing that you need to consider uh, is headroom. Uh, this does look pretty tight and I'm not gonna lie, it is. When you're getting dressed and things like that, you do have to do it from a laying down uh, position. But I actually used to have the little, I think it's Blue Ridge Overland gear or something, um, uh, Jeep Attic that was kind of like this mesh uh, screen that you could put across the top to be able to uh, hold things, to have more storage. Well, I found on my first trip out with it that as I sat up here in bed, my head would hit it and it just took away this uh, very precious space up here. Jeeps actually have a lot of headroom because of the way that these fiberglass panels are um, you know, just so high up above the, uh, the Jeep roll cage here. So um, it's a really, really great thing to have headroom. Obviously, if you're in a rooftop tent, you're gonna get a whole lot more space than this. You're gonna get a whole lot more headroom. But again, this is uh, the setup that is just perfect for me. 
let me talk about something that is, in my opinion, the very best thing about sleeping inside your vehicle. And that is not these roto packs, but let's put it that way the hard shell that you're sleeping in. We go out in snowstorms, high winds, rainstorms. It's, it's not fun if you're not facing some adversity, right? Not every day is perfect and pristine like it is uh, out here while I'm filming. That being said, the biggest complaint that I hear from folks who are sleeping in tents or rooftop tents is, oh, I got a horrible night's sleep because the wind was whipping my tent all night long. Um, in many cases, if you have a rooftop tent, you have to position your vehicle a certain way based on kind of where you think the wind is coming from so that maybe it goes up over your hard shell and doesn't affect the uh, soft sides of your rooftop tent uh, as much so you'll get a better night's sleep. Well, little secret, inside the Jeep you hear zero, absolutely zero wind noise. Sure, if it's raining, you'll get a little on top of your roof, but you know, that's kind of to be expected. And it actually becomes a little bit like a white noise um, that I don't mind uh, if it does happen to be raining. So, like I said, I think the number one reason to sleep inside your Jeep is right there. And that is the hard side, hard roof, uh, everything will keep you contained without having to hear a bunch of fabric flapping around. Now, there's one other thing to kind of add to that, and that is security. So if you're in a tent on the ground, um, I don't care how brave you are or how tough you think you are, I know you've had that thought run through your head of, what was that sound? And you think, well, there might be something walking around my tent. Is it an animal or maybe even worse, is it a person? And uh, you know, a little bit of the fear factor can kick in. Inside the vehicle, you don't have that. Uh, I do lock the doors uh, when I go to sleep at night and uh, I'm not really overly concerned about somebody being able to get to me or an animal being able to get to me to attack or anything like that. So having that hard side also gives you that additional level of security while you sleep, which I think contributes to a better night's sleep when you're off-road, car camping, overlanding, uh, whatever we wanna call it here. So no wind noise, great night's sleep. Security, also a great night's sleep. All right, so here's the part of the video that's gonna get a little weird, and that is, me showing you how I get into the Jeep for my uh, for my night's sleep and uh, you know I'm a tall guy and I'm gonna tell you it's you know not necessarily pretty <laughs> it doesn't look comfortable in terms of uh, when you watch someone in their rooftop tent they gracefully glide up their ladder get in their tent zip it closed um, to get into your Jeep and sleep in there it's a little bit different. You have to think about the way that you're getting in. And once you're in, you're pretty much in. So the best way to approach that is I actually walk up to the Jeep backwards, just like this, reach inside, step up. Now you're gonna be asking, uh, what about these muddy shoes of mine? I always have a grocery bag handy, take the shoes off, one, two, toss those on the roof. If you know that it's not going to be raining or snowing, I usually just put my shoes uh, up here on the roof for the night. I don't have any concerns that somebody's going to come and steal my muddy shoes. I could also obviously put them inside. Go ahead and do that. And I would put them up in the front seat. So again, everything is still contained inside the vehicle. Now from here, it's a little bit of a, I don't know, a ballet, if you will. You have to get it right. And being as tall as I am, again, this is gonna look 
just a little bit awkward. So feet need to come back and up and up. And there you have it. I feel like I might just take a nap like right now. Now, once you're in, it's uh, as simple as No, that wasn't the end of the video. Um, it's as simple as shut your door, lock it if you uh, want to, and you're good to go. I know I have the uh, door open on the other side there, so I'd obviously, if I was really uh, going down to sleep for the night, I would have closed that up uh, already. But uh, I'm gonna bring the camera in here with me so you can see my leg room, head room, and uh, how I'm situated here while I'm inside the Jeep itself. Probably a uh, good thing to show you as well, when I wake up in the morning, I have my shoes handy. It's always good in my opinion, uh, unless the weather won't allow you to have a uh, pair of shoes that are just a uh, slip on. Just like that. So then you're not fussing with trying to tie your shoes and all that sort of stuff as you're getting out of your uh, vehicle in the morning. So I'm gonna actually get back in there with the camera, give you sort of that POV view of what it looks like when I'm inside the Jeep uh, again. So maybe you will consider this sleep setup for yourself. It is a great place to get started. You don't have to spend money on a roof rack. You don't have to spend money on a rooftop tent. All you need to be able to do, fold your seats flat, get yourself a decent mattress, and you are good to go sleeping inside your vehicle. All right, so I've gone ahead and positioned the camera there on a small tripod on top of my uh, fridge. Let me go ahead and uh, get in. Again, if I got in forward facing, it would be actually, I think impossible for someone as tall as me, but uh, rear facing, sorry, you're gonna have to uh, look at my back here for a second. Again, have the uh, grocery bag handy for your shoes. In this case, I'll just toss them up on top, rotate legs around, and hopefully you can see me still to some degree. Get my feet all the way down. Uh, I don't know what it is about this deep sleep, but this is super comfortable. Um, you will notice um, probably with a hat on, this little button starting to hit the top of uh, this, uh, this chair here. But um, what I actually do, being as tall as I am, in order to um, you know sleep well during the night is a few things. One, I can, well, let me go ahead and close this. I wanted to close this uh, out just to give you that full picture of uh, a few things. One, in order to make sure that you can fit in here all the way if you're tall, is you can side sleep, right? You can curl your legs up just a bit. And as you can tell, there's plenty of room there at the top of my head. And in fact, I have to stretch my feet out just a bit to uh, touch the tailgate. Uh, so you can side sleep with, uh, out having uh, your feet or your head touching anything. Now, if you wanna stretch out fully and you're inside, in this case, a Jeep JL uh, on the deep sleep solo mat, what I do just to give myself a little extra room is I'll put my feet in the far corner down there and then I will actually push my head and my pillow up just slightly over this armrest. So my head in this case, while yes, I can still rotate like that and there's a slight bit of room between um, my uh, top of my head and the front passenger seat, I like to sleep a little bit sideways, which actually just gives me, oh yeah, a ton of room and actually nothing uh, behind my head here. So this is kind of my general uh, sleep posture. My fridge and all of my uh, gear storage down the side here, I still have uh, you know shoulder room or elbow room, whatever you want to call it. And then uh, let me show you the uh, area for my feet, just one second. So uh, here are my legs and right now, 
you can hear them. Uh, they're actually touching my uh, Outback Adventures trail gator table. Um, this is really not that big of a problem. If I just uh, position myself a little different, it's no longer touching, but trust me, it is close. But I did wanna show you the amount of room between my uh, knees, if you will, and where these rotopacks are. Now, one option, don't do rotopacks, and you'll have just a ton more room uh, for your knees to uh, move up or anything like that. But for me, it was more important to have water storage. And uh, I'm not gonna be able to measure this necessarily. I'm gonna say I probably have a good 10 inches or so above my knee um, before it would hit the uh, rotopack or anything like that. Oh, sorry, I, uh, I fell asleep there for a second. It's just so comfortable. Uh, so here is kind of that uh, view of my headroom. Again, I can put my head here and uh, still have a, I don't know if you can see it, just a slight gap there. Uh, I'm not sure if the camera caught that, but what I again tend to do is I actually prefer to sleep just a little bit sideways. And uh, there I am sleeping uh, fully extended, feet all the way down uh, inside the Jeep here. I have one regret about uh, the setup and it actually has nothing to do with the uh, gear that I have, the fridge, the window shades, uh, the mattress, the sleeping bag, nothing. It actually has something to do with the vehicle. And you're saying, well, aren't all Jeeps uh, the same size? Aren't they you know, effectively the same dimensions and everything inside? Uh, answers kind of. Um, one thing I'll mention really quick, if you have a four by E, this is gonna be really difficult because the seats actually are up higher. So you'd probably have to do a seat delete if you have a four by eight. So there's a little uh, public service announcement. But the one thing I regret about the vehicle is that I got a base model Rubicon back in uh, 2020 and I did not get remote start. Now, remote start, what's that have to do with your sleeping? I can promise you this, one of the nicest things to wake up to is warmth and when i'm out winter camping and so on though i am working on a, a diesel heater uh, option right now it is waking up when it's freezing cold does everybody love that no so if i had the um, remote start i could click click preset the heater on high to be pumping heat as soon as the vehicle starts which would just be oh amazing i've wanted that so bad so what I've actually done some really cold mornings is I've kind of crawled over here into the front seat or at least extended my leg down to push the brake pedal while reaching and pushing that uh, push start button. It's, uh, it takes uh, being fairly flexible, but uh, I was able to do it. It's just, trust me, it's not pretty. One, two, you have to get out of your sleeping bag and all of that, which is not what you want to do anyway when it's freezing cold. So. Um, that's one regret. If you're gonna sleep in your vehicle, remote start is a major, major plus. Absolutely keep an eye out for remote start when you're doing your options. All right, so I could have staged that. I could have put my shoes on before but uh, I just wanted to show you kind of the time it takes to get out of the vehicle and be good to go. I think if you had a rooftop tent, it might even take longer because you've got to come down the stairs, you still got to put your shoes on and all that uh, sort of stuff. So um, that's gonna wrap on uh, this video. I know it's uh, you know, a little bit weird watching me laying down inside my Jeep uh, as I talk to you here. But I thought this was uh, an important video to put out because the way that I overland, the way that I car camp is different in many ways from a lot of other channels uh, that have more built out rigs. And it's what I'm trying to showcase here, not just that I have, you know, the perfect setup or anything like that. That's not the case but it is a very minimalist setup when it comes to having everything inside the vehicle while still being able to sleep in there. Um, I love it. 
I hope you love it if uh, you start to set up your vehicle this way. But being able to show you my bedroom or my sleep setup is uh, you know, something I've been wanting to do for a long time. I've just never taken the time to do it. So hopefully you're uh, still with me at this point in the video. Like, comment, ask me questions if you have questions. Uh, and most importantly, please subscribe. Uh, it helps out the channel a ton. So as I usually say, uh, thanks for coming along for the ride. I really appreciate it.